This is a demo for a custom reports module built for VTiger open source. Let's start with the basics. We have our menu and we can access reports and dashboards. While in the reports list, we can see folders, collapse and expand, and then we have list of our reports, different types of reports. We have chart, detail and pivot and few additional fields such as sharing type, schedule, modify time, etc. So we'll go into and create a report. So we have three options, again, detail, chart, and pivot. Let's start with chart, and I'll put in that as a test report. You can select your folder, select your module, as well as secondary modules as necessary. Description goes here. However, if you choose everyone, that will be public and everyone will have access to it. You can also schedule it to go out um, at certain time. You can specify the recipients as well as a certain email address and the from address. So it gives you some options to customize the email subject, recipient, sender, um, as well as the body. And you can also include the signature or pull it from the email template. Next, we'll go to the filters section, which is very basic. You'll be able to put in the filters that you need. That's basic VTiger functionality. One um, exception is that with this extension, you can add groups, whereas with standard VTiger, that's not really possible. So if you know how grouping works, you can add and or or and this way get the data that you need. So I'll skip that, go to next, and then we have our list of charts. So we have our pie chart, donut, and a few others. Um, and then down below, we have the configuration for each chart. So for this example, I'll just pick a donut chart. And next, I get to select grouping fields. So in this case, I'll just do maybe invoice date month and let's do a sum of total we have an option where to put the legend I'll keep it at the top we can also show the value the name or the amount on the legend and I'll show you that in a second we have an option to show the grid and as well as display the label and the large number formatting so I'll go ahead and generate it so this is what it looks like without any additional configuration. So as I mentioned, we can move the legend either way. Just for testing purpose, I'll put it to the bottom and you can see how it will show up here. I'll switch it back to the top. You can also remove it if it's not necessary. Um, next, you have an option to sort by certain fields. You can do limit and order by. Um, the data grid usually is helpful on bar charts, not necessarily donut, and we'll take a look at example later. So the legend value is, if I set it to yes, hit save, it'll then show me the amount and the percentage that the chart is displaying. So it gives you kind of different view. And there's a few other options where you can select the value and then again, see the information that you need. Uh, the nice feature is the formatting large number. If you're dealing with uh, larger numbers, you don't really need to see the decimals or after a thousand separator. And you can see here, it just puts it in a way where it's easy to read. And also you can select the display label. This is what comes out of the chart. So let's do the group label, which is uh, the month. And that shows you the month instead of the amount. You could also do the percent, but the month seems to make the most sense. And in this case, it would almost make sense to remove the legend so it looks neater because you are going to eventually put it on the dashboard. Next, let's take a look at the stacked report. So I'll just leave this as is. And I'll find my test report. So this is the one that we'll take a look at. And 
this is a special chart and I'll show you which one it is. So I'll just go through the third step. So this is the one that we selected, bar funnel chart. And with this one, we can group again by type. We have the same options, the grid, the display label, format, large number. And with this one, we can select up to three fields to show the information. So if I were to expand this, you can see um, that the chart, uh, we have the other project contracts. So these are the different amounts per um, invoice and gives you the total received and balance and it's kind of a trend over time. So say if we wanted to see what's the balance over time period, you can see that. Um, say if we leave the total, that might probably make most sense. And again, you have option to add uh, the grid. You can turn off the label. We have the formatting, hit save. And then you can see the grid, which is very um, faint in the background, but it definitely helps. In addition, you, you might notice the uh, line going across, and this is the draw horizontal line, which allows you to draw a line on the chart just to help you visualize the goals or what you're going after. So again, very um, straightforward usage. Um, next, let's take a look at the matrix matrix report. Um, I'll start with, actually, I'll just pick one that already exists. So let's do this one. So with the matri matrix reports, we have um, options for multiple rows, uh, multiple columns that will get grouped by, and then you select your data fields. So in this example, um, I selected the type as my row, and then the column is the invoice date. Say if I were to select to add a year to it um, and hit save, it will show me um, the year at the top because the filter is only to show 2019. We can't really see how it would collapse. So what I'll do is I will change that to say 2018 and let's put that and hit save and now you can see how 2018 shows up in this as well the nice thing is you can collapse and expand and it works on either side so it's very convenient to manipulate the report and if you go to customize I'll just show you the options that we have. So you have your filters as usual, and then this is the same uh, where you select your rows, columns, and the data. And you can also rename the labels at the time that they get printed on the chart. And then you can also add a chart if you would like to to the pivot report. It basically takes you to the fourth step. And you go through the same steps and add the chart, which will then show up at the bottom in addition to your matrix report. Next, we're going to take a look at our dashboards. To access dashboards, you would go into the reports list through the menu and click on the dashboards button. A few things about dashboards. First, you can see we have tabs. Each tab can have as many widgets as you would like. You can easily create tabs and move them around. Next, we have boards and board can have as many tabs and you can have as many boards as you would like. Also, boards can be shared between the users, groups, and roles. So you can create one board with multiple tabs and share it across the company. Next, we have options to include reports and add miscellaneous widgets and few other options to uh, manipulate how the dashboard page would look. So let's take a look at these real quick. So edit widgets. It simply allows you to enable the drag and drop mode, which will then uh, help you to move stuff around. You can resize widgets. You can move them around from one spot to another. A very easily drag and drop interface. So that's straightforward. 
next we have dynamic filter which we'll get to uh, later on and the other few are just adding a new tab very straightforward um, rename you can also duplicate tab with existing widgets meaning that those widgets will then get cloned to the new tab and in the new tab you can then change the layout and that will not impact the original tab that you duplicated from so it basically creates um, a second set of widgets delete rearrange straightforward and then you have an option to add boards and the boards were the ones mentioned right here and just to show you um, that you can edit it and that's where you would uh, rename the board as well as share it with any other users so in this scenario you can see where we have one shared board and it's called daily summaries it's currently empty but just to show you that how the shared boards would appear let's get into each widget and see how the dashboard actually looks so if I scroll all the way down I can see um, all the widgets that I've created so um, the first one is the current physical year so that's simply a list of invoices that's available in your invoice module and the mini list is what we call um, simply pulls the information from that list and shows it in the dashboard so to add a mini list you would select mini list and then I'll do exactly the same as you see as the first widget select invoices select my list and then you can select your fields as well as pick a color refresh time and the minimum maximum height once you save it you'll have a few other options that are you can order your mini lists by uh, two fields and you can also add a separator at the time that you order them and we'll get to that a uh, little uh, later and I'll explain how these work um, and just to show you where the list came from I'll go to the invoices module and show you that this is the current physical year few other filters so to include the data into your dashboard you simply need to create a standard vtiger list set a condition and then at the time that you pull it in it will allow you to select an additional fields that you would like so I'll go ahead and close that so mini list very straightforward very useful functionality we have a few other things here you can preview edit or go into details um, so next one is top accounts chart and this is simply a report that's available in that was created in the v reports and again you can click on the gear icon change the color add the refresh time and you can also go into the report edit or just preview if I were to click on this eye icon it will simply open the report that has been created um, by me earlier on and if we wanted to go back to the report list you can take any of these reports and include them into your dashboard you can easily include any of these reports into your dashboard and the easiest way would be to go into your dashboard and select from add widget and this is where all your reports will show up and you'll be able to just say click one it gets pulled in you can then resize it drag it around and then add a color refresh time as well so I'll just close that so again all the reports that you see here are pulled from the standard um, reports in the extension and then we have our stacked summary again all the reports are interactive you can hover over see the information and include or exclude applies to every single report um, as well as this is the opportunity sales funnel it's one of the charts available in the reports module which you can create and then include into your dashboards and then we see a few others we put them in a way where you can see different layouts and how they could be used and this is the one that we looked at earlier we have our um, comparison year over year and again interactive and finally we have our invoice summary which was a matrix report which again can also be included in the dashboard and 
remember we added a chart this can be uh, removed on the report or you can leave it in here next let's take a look at a few other dashboards that we have so the activity log uh, this is a demo dashboard where you can see again um, quite a few mini lists just shows you leads from this month opportunities touch today invoices today tickets today etc just so you can see a lot of information while on a single screen this uh, operation summary and financial summary those are again uh, lists and we use key metrics where we can include and select from existing lists select the color and then we can choose to show if there are any records or not so these are simply um, lists that show how many records there are in each and you have full control over what to show and how many um, next this is a nice advanced feature for the activity or history log so this shows you all the activity in the company or vtiger and you can see this user added a comment um, updated ticket changed the invoice date so it gives you very detailed information step by step as to what happened with um, the data in your system and we have uh, direct links to those records if needed to and again if you hit gear icon you can change the title and select the refresh time also this particular widget is available at add widgets so it's just history and then it also has additional configuration area if you click on the wrench scroll down you will see that you only can only include comments updates or both and you can also sort and group by parent what that means if say you have 10 tickets and each ticket was touched every hour then at the end of the day you can just click sort and group by parent and it will show you um, starting with ticket one and at what time each was modified so you can see the view from the ticket rather than from the user's activity hour by hour so it kind of shows you a summary of um, that and then again you can select the user as well as set the date and again we have history which is the history one then we have the summaries which are key metrics and the mini list are the ones on the left um, next another dashboard we have project tasks this is um, very straightforward we added quite a few widgets just to see the overdue tasks open tasks in progress canceled and completed again um, one way to see a lot of information without clicking through many screens um, then we have let's say help desk overview again we have unassigned tickets urgent few dashboards um, as well as charts and again tickets tickets um, one um, extremely helpful feature about the dashboards module that it directly integrates with the buttons customizable buttons extension this feature allows you to open the record directly from the dashboard see the information on that record as well as execute any buttons that you have configured with the customizable buttons extension you can use the preview icon or you can use simply the drop down you can add a comment right from it you can add or um, say escalate the ticket which will pull up a number of fields that are configured in the customizable buttons extension so there's a lot you can do from the dashboards and uh, call any screens or edit pages that you need to process say tickets quickly and efficiently next let's take a look at our customer profile so this one is a very important piece um, we haven't touched on it yet so what I have here is just uh, some basic mini lists few charts and that's it so the way it works um, as far as the tabs goes we have this custom option dynamic filter what you can do is you can create a certain tab in your dashboard and then you can 
pre-filter it to say a customer. So in this case, all the information on this dashboard is pre-filled or pre-filtered to Opella organization and we only see the information from, from that organization. So you can see invoices, quotes, the dashboards are also limited to the data from that organization. So what this allows you to do is have a customer profile tab where you can go in and simply change the dynamic filter, either the assigned to or the date or the customer and see the information for that particular record. So I'm just going to remove it and you can see that now it shows all and then if I'll select again dynamic filter and let's do Bitwolf, I hit save and it'll automatically limit to what data is being displayed. So it's a very nice feature. You don't need to create multiple lists or dashboards per customer. You can have one standard and then you can just reapply the filter or the dynamic filter and see the information that you need. In addition, um, on top of being able to filter on the tab level, you can also do that on the widget level. So say if you wanted to pre-filter this widget to have um, only records from this particular person, you can, and it will simply limit the data for that assigned to. Um, it's useful when you have a lot of users or employees and you need to look at multiple data points at the same time for multiple users. So you could have um, two or three widgets per user and in that case you can create just one widget, for example, open tickets, and then for each um, you would just assign a user and it would show you tickets for that particular user for that one list. So you wouldn't need to create three different lists and it would stay next time you look at it. In addition, we have the logged in user, which is also very helpful. You can create a, let's call a standard or default dashboard for your staff. And then at the time that they log in, they'll be taken to the dashboard and it'll show only information or records that are assigned to them. And that can be done through editing dashboard and you would share it with everyone and that would um, be available to everyone. And as soon as they open it, it would only show data for them. So they would not really need to create those dashboards or widgets. It can all be done through the admin. And then to show you how the boards work, we'll go into one of the other ones. So this is operations, again, a test board. You can see we added additional widgets, lists, and you can switch between boards very easily. Um, jumping to the next one as well. So very easy to use, very fast. And then switching back to our original board, we can see it. Thank you.